Hi, this is Hasina Mumtaz welcoming you to NTV's weekly news highlights. The acting editor of Amardesh, a popular Bengali newspaper, Mr. Mahmoud Rahman, has been arrested. Three cases have been filed against him and he has been remanded in custody for 13 days. As yet, he has not appointed a lawyer for his defence. He was arrested at the offices of Amardesh by the detective branch of the police. The police say that he has been arrested for treason and violating information technology laws. Our correspondent, Fakhrul Alam Kanchan, reports. On Thursday afternoon, Mahmoud Rahman was arrested and brought before the Chief Metropolitan Magistrate in Dhaka for security. There were protests by BNP lawyers at the court premises. The detective branch requested the court to grant 24 days remand, but after the hearing, the court granted 13 days. BNP lawyers said that he was arrested when a Suomoto rule was issued against him. The initial case was initiated four months ago. He was arrested in the case filed on 20th of December 2012 at Tejgao Thana. The Metropolitan Public Prosecutor claims that Mahmoud Rahman made derogatory comments in his newspaper about the judiciary and honourable justices of the courts, which constitutes treason. The other offences were violation of information technology laws of Bangladesh. On the morning of Thursday, Detective Branch Police surrounded the Amardesh offices. The police refused a request from Mahmoud Rahman to prepare himself and to be given time to say his prayers. He was immediately arrested. The allegation against him includes publishing Skype conversation, which was subject to a High Court order. Amardesh journalists protested his arrest. Mahmoud Rahman's computer, CPU, CCTV and other items were seized by the police. Journalists also protested at the press club. Mahmoud Rahman was previously arrested in 2010 when he served 11, 11 months imprisonment for publishing another controversial article. Ten senior BNP leaders, including the acting Mahasajiv of BNP, Mirza Fakhrul Islam Alamgir, have been sent to jail after being refused bail in seven cases brought against them. Our correspondent, Arifal Rahman, reports. The senior leaders of BNP and Mirza Fakhrul Islam Alamgir appeared before the court on Friday. The charges against them include attacking police, damaging and setting fire to vehicles and obstructing the police in performing their duties. They have been set to be tried under the Explosives and Druto Bichar Tribunal Acts. The defendants are Mirza Fakhrul Islam Alamgir, Barsa Madud Ahmed, Mirja Abbas, Goyesu Chandra Roy, Abdullah Al Noman, Barkat Ullah Bulu, Shahiduddin Chowdhury and Anne and Mawazim Hussein Alal. Other two BNP leaders, Rian Rizvi Ahmed and Amanullah Aman, were brought from the jail to the court of Hajira. The court heard the allegations but refused bail and returned them to prison. The lawyer for the government said that the charges brought against them are non bailable offences. The lawyer for the defence said that there are no substantive allegations against the 10 senior leaders, but these are charges that are being brought against them for political motives. He said many of the alleged leaders were not even present at the scene of the crime on the day and as such these are false charges which are being brought as per instructions by the government. The accused leaders gave short speeches from the prison van. They said their struggle will not come to an end until the downfall of Sheikh Hasina. Political scientists have said this week that they fear long-term damage to the country due to religious issues now becoming a factor in the political unrest of the country. They also fear that due to the situation becoming ever more critical, the settling of issues through compromise is getting ever out of reach. Our correspondent Ashikur Rahman Chadri reports, there is an outcry from the people of Bangladesh that there is no guarantee of human life or security in Bangladesh at present. Political scientists tend to theorise that conflicts begin with ideological differences which are apparently irreconcilable, followed by polar divisions. This situation has been present in Bangladesh for many years between the two big political parties. Pro problems arise when aggression results from polar divisions. If the situation gets worse, then this can lead to a grave impasse from which it can take years to recover back to a peaceful state. Associate Professor of the Department of Peace and Conflict Studies at Dhaka University said this week, that when religion becomes part of politics, then dialogue between the parties becomes difficult, as religion is only viewed in terms of differences, and parties find it difficult to see issues from the other side's perspective. He said parties should sit down for dialogue long before things turn to conflict. He also said that religion should not be part of politics. Political scientist Prof Professor Dilara Chowdhury said that when two sides, in this case the Gono Jagaran Monch and Hifazul Islam, cannot resolve the situation among themselves, then conflicts can become critical as extremists on each side always want to impose their ideology on the other. 
She said that if civil war ensues, then other countries will try to intervene against the Islamic extremists. However, she said, this may lead to a situation where the foreign parties may not leave the country afterwards. By mutual agreement with the two major political parties of the country, Transparency International has proposed an election committee to form an election time government to hold the coming national elections. This was proposed at a press briefing on Friday. Our correspondent, Ozer Ibn Omar, reports, the caretaker system of government has been abolished from the constitution by the 15th amendment. It now says elections must be held before the tenor of the current parliament expires. During the election, the Prime Minister and other MPs will continue to hold office. Moreover, it states that the present parliament shall remain valid until the Prime Minister advises the President to declare the end of its tenor or dissolution. However, these procedures leave a lot of gaps in the governments of the country during the elections and many organisations have proposed alternatives to address this situation. Transparency International, at the invitation of the Speaker, proposed that the two major political parties should form a single committee for forming the election time government. This should be an 11-member body. The President, upon dissolution of the government, should then transfer the state's responsibilities to this 11-member election government. TIB members said at present Bangladeshi politics is negatively geared towards the aim of staying in power and getting into power, this being its downside. They suggested mediation between the political parties to ensure free and fair elections. The Election Commission has declared an amendment for the election of the 20th President of Bangladesh. If there is more than one candidate, then the election will be scheduled to take place on 29th of April at the Parliament Secretariat. But if there is only one candidate and if he or she does not withdraw his or her candidature, then on 24th of April the election will be automatically called in their favour. The Chief Election Commissioner, Kazi Rokibuddin Ahmad, held a meeting with the Honourable Deputy Speaker, Colonel Retired Shokat Ali. Our correspondent, Arafat Siddiq, reports. This week, in accordance with the law, the Chief Election Commissioner declared that to contest the presidential elections, candidates need to submit their candidature by 21st of April. The election is scheduled for 29th April. The last date a candidate can withdraw their candidature is 24th of April. The Election Commissioner explained that this is a restricted election, meaning that only MPs can vote. It is an open voting process, which means that the voters' details are visible and candidates can see who voted for them. He said that the voting and the result will be declared on the same day. Thank you very much for watching and see you next week. Allah Hafiz.